Hello and welcome to Volns Unleashed. I'm one of your hosts, Brian Clark, and joined with us today is your other host. Unmuted. In a moment, click. click Hello, and... everybody. Hello. No longer have the handy hardware mute by my ear. We have a little uh, upgrade in the studio, so um, do forgive me for a little technical slip. But today we do have a very special treat for you. Of course, we always have a special treat, our host here, Brian Clark, but we have a very special guest today, and that is our friend Steve, and um, actually, legally, we should call him Developer Steve. Right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk to him today, and he's a, he's a very interesting person. He's uh, definitely going to be a recurring guest here on the show, and he's going to teach us a lot about how PHP and DOM PDF have um you know some intrinsic vulnerability so we're gonna learn a lot today and uh, this is a great vulnerability there's already a lot of um information around it so developer steve has you know gathered the the best information that he's found and he's a php expert and uh yeah we're gonna really just you know dive into it and learn as much as we can and take a look at a poc and just you know sort of understand um how this happened excellent well, without further ado, let's bring him on. Hey there, developer I'm Steve. Live. Hello, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. We we mm -hmm. surely appreciate you taking the time over there in your area of the world. I know it's a, a bit early, but we uh, greatly appreciate it because we want to learn more about this latest vulnerability. Oh, it is. And actually, I did also intend to say hello from Tuesday and from the future of Australia. <laughs> How is the future looking over there? Bright and, and bushy time? Um, well, the sun isn't quite out yet, but it's coming. So, I mean, that's always a good sign. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, Kyle, so for folks that maybe aren't familiar with the show, what we do with Vulns Unleashed is we take, we pick out one of the latest vulnerabilities because there's plenty of them that go around each month, right? Each week, each day even. And we take a deeper dive and look into what's, that vulnerability all about so that we can understand what it's kind of causing, what's the issue there, and how it can be uh, exploited and used to somebody's advantage to do malicious things potentially. And then uh, maybe even, you know, look at some demos and proof of concepts around that vulnerability so you can really drive home like how this is actually working and implemented, especially beneficial for me as a developer to understand these things so that I can maybe avoid using these libraries if it's an open source vulnerability or maybe processes or, or executables that I might be relying on in my systems that I'm hosting my apps on or whatever, right? That type of stuff is super helpful and interesting in that way. And uh, Kyle brings on that uh, security practitioner and some developer background experience as well. And then same for developer Steve, as Kyle mentioned, uh, having some PHP experience as well to give us specifics into today's vulnerability that we're going to be focus focusing on for Vulns Unleash. And that is, it's, it's called DOM PDF. That's My correct. Friend? Yeah. And yeah, I've been um, coding, like, like you were saying, like I've been coding PHP for uh, many, many years now, since version four, and we're currently at version eight, although we did kind of skip six, but that's a long story. Um, the, <laughs> they just skipped six, literally. But um, yeah, I've been using PHP for a number of years now. And there's some things that, well, as a senior developer, I always found um, there was some mundane tasks. I mean, you know, let's face it, development, there's some stuff you just really don't like doing and pdf creation is totally one of those i am not afraid to say that um so like this library is super handy for that like being able to build up pdfs super quick nice okay which is helpful like, yep. i ahead, feel Dom. like uh every language right kind of has its version of dom pdf there's something you know in python that lots of folks use to generate pdfs there's uh you know similar libraries in java as well so yeah, I think um, whenever you know there's a prevalent tool, right? Common common file format. PDFs a very common file format. So whenever there's a prevalent tool like this, yeah, they definitely become targets, right? Like that's exactly the type of thing uh, a bug bounty hunter, you know, a good guy hacker, or you know, a criminal is going to you know really target. You know, a good guy security researcher looking for CVEs, you know, to add to to his uh, his or her record, their record, right? Or just like you know somebody who's trying to you know cause chaos. So, um, yeah, people really do look really, really deep into um, 
the sort of in you know it's the same thing with file upload right like if if i'm attacking a service and uh there's an upload tool i'm going to look at what sort of formats it accepts you know does it actually not accept the formats that it says it doesn't and you know what what can you you know get this file upload service to actually do right so um i think yeah stuff like this is always fascinating to me from a security researcher perspective um like you were saying brian but also uh, as you were saying, like from a developer perspective, as somebody who, you know, has written applications and who has had to worry about this. So, yeah, I think uh, I'm very interested in, you know, hearing because a developer, Steve, has a great blog post that um, I was hoping we could share, actually. So, yeah, um, yeah he wrote got a the link on the page. Here. <laughs> OK, awesome. We'll bring that on in just a moment, but really quick with. We don't want to uh, forget that we are doing this live. So if you are tuning into this live, we appreciate you being here. If you're watching the recording, maybe you can join us sometime in the future. Uh, I want to say a quick hello to the folks in the chat room and I'll remind folks that if while you're joining us live, you have the opportunity to ask questions about the vulnerabilities that we're reviewing and taking a look at. So if you have things that come up to mind when you're hearing us talk through these things that you're wondering, please don't hesitate to drop those in the chat room and we'll do our best to bring them on and answer them as best we can. Speaking of folks in the chat room, I see we have some uh, familiar names in there. Uh, I see minus one vortex, a fit nerd. Thank you for joining us there. Hacker Kyle, uh, WW Sean 08 was saying, I was told I would find a pickle dancer here. I have no idea what Sean is talking about there. I'm just going to move on. Uh, and Sean's also saying new glasses. They look good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. They are, they are new. I'm start, my eyes are starting to go. No, no one wants to know about my age or anything like that. Uh, and then minus one vortex was asking about dad jokes. I mean, maybe, maybe we can get some dad jokes infused into here, but we'll see if it makes Maybe. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sounds I have like a one. Challenge. That you have like one? Okay. Challenge. Let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, I haven't done, done it on this stream, so we're good. Um, but, um, why did the vulnerability get tired? Hmm. Should I, I don't know it? why. Should I spoil it? I think I know. Yeah, you probably do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go on. You, you, you do. Okay. Did, did did it ran somewhere? Oh, it did. It did indeed. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Oh, I should have had the uh, I should have had the sound effect ready to go for that as well. But um, uh, I know I've completely ruined it now. Oh wait, there we go. Got one. <laughs> one dad joke. One dad joke. We'll, we'll keep a we'll keep a counter next time. We'll have like a dad joke counter in the bottom left. Or something. That sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So you all were talking about a link, a blog post that Mr. Developer Steve over here had put together for Dom PDF. Shall we bring that on? Are we ready? Yeah, definitely. I think let's yes. share that. All right. Cool. Got I'm it. even wearing my hacker hoodie as well. So. Yes. What, what um, about your hacker voice? <laughs> all right. You, you, you revealed? Me to do the voice? Yeah. Hang on. Bring out all your vulnerabilities. Ooh. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> I can even do the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I want to play the whole thing. There you go. <laughs> I want to show my soundboard was on that screen. Yeah, let me turn off the evil voice. All right, so yeah, this is the blog post that I wrote. This one is like, I mean, all vulnerabilities are scary to some degree, but this one in particular, like knowing how far and wide this particular library is used is really bad. I mean, doubly so because uh, DOM PDF, like it's a PDF generator that uses, well, takes HTML, styled HTML, and outputs a PDF, um, predominantly used in e-commerce websites. And PHP still powers you know, a good 70% of the internet. So mm. double, triple, quadruple square is scary. But um, this is the blog post. that's through oh, WordPress, right, oh. or something too? Uh, WordPress, uh, Laravel, um, uh, Magento, like there's a lot of sites that, um, well, PHP, e-commerce sites that are PHP powered, powering our like buying of everything, which is mm. like kind of makes it worse because, well, that's financial information. That's like personal information. There's a lot of stuff that you can get from that, those servers and those apps. Um, and yeah, like being a, oh, I should make that bigger. I made every other page bigger except this one. But yeah, I have, there is a write up and there's also a demo. So we can talk through the demo because I actually have it working and can show how it works, what it does, and also how to stop it. Because the scary part with this one in particular is that there is still no patch for it. So oh. there's no fix per se. There's some ways to fix it, but there is no fix yet. 
So um, the code a fix has been pushed to the master branch, uh, which you can see on the um, the sneak page. But um, yeah, it hasn't been yet released. So and we're talking like hundreds of millions of websites or hundreds of millions of apps and installs that are using this particular one, which is even more worse. Um, yeah, so just for, for everyone who's here that might not know why like RCE is bad, right? Like RCE is bad. Um, it's it's super bad, right? And like I think a lot of people will know that, but you know it can lead to uh, ACE or arbitrary code execution. Let's say like you know somebody's just you know, doing remote code execution, and you know they're they're trying to figure out how to get a foothold on your box. You know if they do gain that foothold on your box, then they can sort of pivot throughout your systems and like you know wreck all sorts of havoc. So it's really important to have experts like developer Steve, you know, weigh in on stuff like this when there when there isn't a patch, right? When there's no path to remediation. And I think, um, you know, stuff like that is just, uh, you know, it's it's few and far between, right? We're, uh, so we're, we're kind of getting it from the horse's mouth here. So like, <laughs> yeah, w without further ado, I just want everyone to know, everyone who might be a developer and they, maybe they're like, oh, I always hear RCE thrown around, but like, why is it so bad? You know, it's because eventually, you know, once a, a hacker, you know, establishes a foothold, they're able to, you know, do arbitrary stuff, right? Eventually that's the goal, right? Elevate that privilege, pivot throughout your networks, and uh, you know, figure out what you know the, the perimeters of what they can do are. So that's that's why this is really bad, especially on the type of systems developer Steve's talking about, where there's credit card information, uh, you know, personal information, PII, right? Um, if that data is getting exfiltrated, you know, by a silent, you know, silent assassin of an adversary, right? Then um, you know, you might not be none the wiser. So it's important to you know remediate the stuff, even if there aren't patches. You, you know, if you have to block. You know certain types of traffic. So developer Steve is going to teach us all about this. But um, we do have a question oh, re regarding what you were just talking about there, Kyle, from minus one vortex about uh -huh. uh, what's worse in your opinion between an RCE in web apps and mobile RCE. Uh, zero click called sometimes. Yeah. So zero click RCEs are terrible. I mean, mobile apps are basically just computers with like tons of information. Uh, in intimate data, you know, about like what you do every day and, you know, your operations and everything. So I think um, it's hard for me to say which one's worse, right? We do a lot of our mobile banking and like web browsers and uh, sometimes that's mobile as well, right? Sometimes it's on PC. So it, that's really hard for me to say personally. Um, not exactly a vulnerability researcher, but I, I, I'm, I think that's a really interesting question. Um, I'd have to think about that a little more uh, okay. to come up with a better answer, I think, than that. Yeah, I haven't well, really thought about you that mentioning question. mobile question, banking though. made me kind of smirk a little bit. I've been seeing, I've been watching lots of uh, March Madness. Uh, I usually only watch live sports, college basketball tournament for folks that maybe aren't familiar. One of the commercials that keep coming up lately in the U.S. here is about. Uh, don't you ever wonder? It, the, basically, the commercial starts off in the way that's like, don't you ever wonder what people are, everybody's doing on their phones, and then the commercial kicks off they're all banking on their phones and i'm like no they're not and i can't i actually verbally respond saying no they're not but you're just mentioning that people are mobile bank and now i'm like i'm wrong i'm wrong like it's like a commercial for bank of america or something like that like well yeah. you can use the best app you know blah 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 blah. i feel like everybody has a mobile banking app now you know and like definitely there there are instances where people are getting like redirected right to like phony versions of like banking apps and like entering their information or like now a popular one is like the people are getting like mo the people are actually intentionally getting you know criminals are getting fake mobile banking apps and they're showing somebody that they performed a transaction and that they're going to get that transaction but it's like a fake app that's designed oh, to look wow. like, you know a popular banking app yeah so yeah. um yeah people people get creative yeah well without i can go on more about this i have some thoughts too but let's uh let's let's take a step back though so what what exactly is dom pdf i know we mentioned it's you know it's a library that or P, dom pdf is the name of the library or dom pdf is yes. the vulnerability name okay so dom pdf is the name no, of the no, library no. okay yeah. and for folks that uh also may be watching we might you might see us kind of talk over each other a little bit it's the latency between you know areas of the earth that we're on here so there's something like that i always feel bad even in our one-on-one -on -one calls the developer steven i have i'm like i'm sorry i didn't mean to talk over you that kind of thing but the pauses tend to happen in any case so dom pdf is the library name in php to help developers create pdfs then there's a vulnerability yes in it. and what let's yeah. for everybody to like level set what is this vulnerability causing or doing uh in that library 
Um, so yeah, it's a, it is a library that helps create PDFs from styled HTML, which, okay. I mean, ultimately amazingly handy. I've used it many times through my developer origin story, as I like to think of it. Um, and so the, this is the repository. It's immensely popular. It's been around since, well, it's been on Composer, which is PHP's package manager since 2013. And as you can see, it's got like 80, uh, like 8,000 stars. It's actually used by 59,000 like repositories as a dependency. Um, and this is literally just the tip of that proverbial security iceberg that we always love talking about <laughs> because, and I'll switch to the composer page in a minute. And yeah, there's numbers on that are even worse because it's used by some really big repositories. Um, but yeah, literally it turns like, um, styled HTML or just regular HTML chunks into straight PDF. And I've got an example of what it, how it's supposed to work or how it does work and then how the vulnerability itself works. Cause it actually, the vulnerability happens through, um, sort of in some injected CSS and we can step through that as well. Um, cause it's actually really. It's actually really sneaky. Like when I was picking mm. through it, like realizing what it does and how it does, it was, I, it's ingenious to the security researchers that found this really did stumble upon a needle in a haystack. Um, wow. but yeah, this is, um, this is a really good library. Like I've used it heaps. It's, um, pretty straightforward. It's used by, uh, like we've been saying, used by a lot of the industry, much of the industry, almost all the industry. <laughs> mm. Um, on the composer page, so this is how most works will use it is literally just composer install, similar to npm or pip install or any other the repository manager. But it's got 49,000 installs, 449 dependents through composer. And if we look through the dependents, there's like PHP spreadsheet, for example, 66,000 million installs alone, which is used by other projects and other projects use their projects and yeah, it's pretty big. Um, yeah, this one really did get my attention. As you can see, even PHP Office, uh, PHP Word. So these are like, um, you know, for accounting apps, for example, like um, Invoice Ninja, which does invoice creation on the fly. They're going to use PDF to you know, generate out invoices and whatnot as well. So yeah, the, um, it's something we kind of see with a lot of these vulnerabilities is the flow on effects through ecosystems. But um, this one in particular, tends to feet reach far and wide across the internet. Um, so we do have a working demo. Should we tempt the, uh, the, the, the demo people early in the morning and see if we can get it, get it running? I think so, because I, we, we covered what it is, what it's doing this library. We mentioned that it, the vulnerability is an RCE remote code execution, but I think to help drive that home for people that maybe that's new, seeing it in action is really going to help. That's always my favorite part too. And like you said at the start, like as a developer, understanding the vulnerability at its you know most granular level helps to prevent them to some degree. Because like once as a dev, once I know like what I'm looking for, I know not to do that. <laughs> I think, you know, think like a hacker. I was I, as I, I always like to do. It's like if I can break it, anyone can break it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have built this into our PHP goof app, which is. It's built coming along nicely. I have three stars now. So if anyone's watching and they want to go and like star, star the, the project and well, maybe try it themselves, like please feel free. I would love that. <laughs> but it does have three vulnerabilities in there now. Um, so for those that are not familiar with our goof apps on the Sneak Labs repository, oh, I should post the link. I think I dropped the link in. Then everyone can go and star it because you're all amazing folks. There you go. I was I'll just getting that for you too. I think oh. I'm minus. <laughs> Minus has a really good point about like how how much this stuff has changed. Like now, like yeah, everybody's doing processing of like stuff like this, right? Microservices, containers, right? Like the architecture is completely changed for like um, user input processing and how we compartmentalize services and you know um, put, like make these boundaries. So I think um, Steve, I'm just I'm curious on your perspective on this, like because this is like a you know a seasoned prolific package. So like on a scale of like one to 10, 10 being like log4j for PHP, like how, how bad is this for people who are using this in like client facing services? Like how, how worried should See, you be? I was, 
I was pondering this one, and I'm going to give, for those that are familiar with the, the genre, I'm the Spinal Tap answer and go 11. Because then I don't think, like, it's kind of, <laughs> kind of reached. I mean, nine at best, but I'm, I'm going to say 11 because Spinal Tap. Um, this one does reach a lot further than I think folks kind of realize. And I don't know that we're collecting enough data as industry wide to understand yet, like how much, how much everyone's been compromised. Cause literally, um, there's one small caveat. Actually, I'm going to give it a nine because there's one small caveat that we can go through on the demo and I'll explain like how I got around it, which kind of wasn't covered in the original research, but guessing the, the link to execute the code was um, kind of half the uh, half the battle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, yeah, I've got some code that kind of sorts that out. Um, yeah, I'd go nine, if not eleven. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that w I'm glad that you were thinking about that before because that was a completely random question I had. You know, while we while we uh, spin up the demo here. But yeah, I think um, everyone could probably benefit from a demo, folks. If you have any questions, do drop them in chat. This is the rare chance where you get to get developer Steve on uh, the show. We get to fight our both of our time zone uh, restraints. You know, mine, Brian's, and developer Steve's. So uh, yeah, we're we're really excited to do this. We're going to try to try to make it work. And yeah, if you have any questions, just drop them in chat. Amazing. Um. So yeah, this this is the PHP Goose demo. Please try it at home. Do not try this in production. You all know that. I just like pointing it out. But um, there's three vulnerabilities to play with in there, including the PHP mailer, notorious PHP mailer um, issue. Won't go into that one today. It's a whole other thing. But um, I've already got this one documented in there and links to the blog posts and all the relevant security pages and whatnot. So this is the Goof app. This is the PHP to do Goof app. Similar to our other ones, it's literally just a, um, a to do list item generator, holder, keeper, demo. So I can do test, for example, and it will save it in the database output, put a date time in there using a universal date time because um, day, month, year for the win, just saying. Um, but it also generate subtle, subtle. But um, it's, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with this. And once you've got it in there, so you can edit, you can delete pretty standard functions. And I've since added for this one, for this particular vulnerability, PDF generation, which, as you would expect, does PDF. Oh, there was a moment where I thought that wasn't going to work, but it did. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> it was like the simplest part of this entire demo. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I have my this is fine scene running. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's generated a PDF, and that was using the PDF on PDF library. And on the code side of things, let me make that a bit bigger. It's pretty simple. I've got um, that particular function sitting in its own file. It's just called pdf.php. It calls in the library as expected. It's in, uh, so set is remote enabled and this actually, that's the only option I've got set in there. But what it's actually doing is grabbing the information from that to do item that's created and then sending it over as a get request. And you could do this as a post or just sending over like an item number and then pull it out of the database on the, on the PDF generated side. Like it wouldn't matter how you did this, you're still gonna get the same result when, the, when we get to the vulnerable vulnerability part. So let's start picking through the vulnerability. Is there, oh no, I thought that was a question. There is not. Um, the, like we was talking about at the start, this particular library takes HTML and outputs it into the PDF, which is really handy because as a dev, as you can see there, like I could H1 style the, the, the title or a title and then load that into the, the HTML output, which then outputs the PDF, which you can like pretty easy to do. Anyway, you can pick through the code yourself. It's all available on the GitHub in the PDF.php page. Now, uh, I'll get to that bit in a sec. How the vulnerability itself works is on the, um, wait, how should I do, should I go through the code side? Yeah, let's go through the code side first. So how this vulnerability itself works is using that HTML approach is, because I'm also generating um, the, the content for the page item entry listing when the F creates. 
So as part of that, like I can in, do the same thing to inject CSS or a CSS file, which is essentially how this particular vulnerability works is mm. in CSS, we can load in font files. So the, and we'll look through how the light, how the library handles this, but the library itself will actually store those custom font styles into a font cache. As long as I can get PHP to that file and execute that remotely, essentially, which is what this vulnerability is. So actually, you know okay. what, should I just demo Wait, it can first? I, can I ask, we can can I ask you a question? Yes. Can, okay. So this works because there's a way to embed P, like arbitrary PHP code inside of font files. Yes. Which then caches on the server inside of font like font folder basically and gets indexed by by the library and then stored for future use. Wow. Are are these like TTF font files or a different format font files? Um as long as basically the library itself checks for the font file header. So um what we actually do, wait, I can show you how we get around this. It's really sneaky. Um awesome. oh, can I put my screen back up? I got you. There we go. So yeah, basically we create a font file. Um, so here's, this is, this is regular Arial, for example. I wanted to use this as a, as a comparison because I've actually created a vulnerable file, font file as part of this demo as well. So this is regular Arial. It's got some basic meta in there, which obviously, you know, font systems use or font, um, yeah, font systems use to, you know, hold licensing, hold like, you know, names of the fonts, like where it's used. And of course, then the character sets. Here's the one, here's one I prepared earlier. So this is the gotcha font file, which is in the, in the, where is it? I lost it. On the, in the demo, it's in the exploits folder. So you can have a look if anyone wants to have a look themselves. But essentially I've created a shell, like a, literally a shell font. There is no characters in this at all because I didn't need them and it made the font file smaller. <laughs> so I stripped all those out. <laughs> Um, it's got a bunch of, I actually don't know where all those languages came from, but they're in there. Um, the real magic happens in the copyright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So PHP info brackets is a function that basically gives you a whole bunch of system information from PHP servers and in the wrong hands. Yeah, that's not good, but you could easily swap this out and do like um, a, a command line executable. Like you could do a database dump, you could do anything you want to do here, like anything at all. I'm just doing a php.info or php info because, um, well, we're just demoing it. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. not malicious. I might be wearing a dark hoodie, but we're not malicious. That um, is the thing with these, but it, these demos, right? And like trying to try and demonstrate a vulnerabilities. We don't really want to do anything malicious, but at the same time, you also want to show the, like the actual risk here and the possibilities of this yeah. because like a lot of times for instance like whenever i'm demonstrating cross-site scripting i might do alert one and everybody's like well big deal you can make an alert pop up right but it's the following steps after yeah. that that you can do you know so yeah i'm with you i feel you on like trying to strike a balance of uh demonstrating these things without doing anything too too harmful yeah after too alert bad, one, yeah. the sky's the sky's the limit after you have remote code execution right it's as as creative as you can get, that's the only thing that's going to like limit you. So yeah, as soon as you have something like that, it's best to disclose it, folks. Don't do anything else besides mm -hmm. for disclosing it after that. So um, yeah, so so let you stay safe. But, actually, that's a good point. Wait, let me let me cue sad music. Please make sure you disclose your vulnerabilities. As as a developer that's always had like you know sites to clean up because there's a rootkit on there. Please. Please, please, please disclose them. <laughs> Sad music for All the right. room. Yeah, everyone's back. totally going to do it. <laughs> back to the font. <laughs> um, so basically, we create this malicious font, which I've called a gotcha slash normal OTF. Now, it's really important to note here, and the originally original security researchers didn't mention this, which cost me about an hour of working out like WTF. But the name here is super important when you're creating your font. So the name on the actual font file, which is called gotcha normal, um, cause I didn't know what else to call it. And that seems like not very malicious. 
has to match um, the font file, the font name, style sheet. So here you can see gotcha, and then it's font weight normal. So this is very important to note because uh, otherwise it will not work. It will not work at all. You just get a whole bunch of random errors from the library, which I was getting for a while and I couldn't work out why. So essentially the library itself, so I can't make the window too much bigger, I don't think. No, I don't think I can. Oh, wait, maybe I can. Uh, is it a bit better? Yeah, not really. Anyway, in the, um, I can't, yeah, I don't think, no. I think I'm like com this, command, this command plus make it bigger? Like the, are you trying to get it so that we can see the file? Um, yeah, basically. Yeah, I didn't really make it bigger. I could always go command oh. like. But essentially, uh, the comp when you in Composer installed this particular library in the vendor folder, which is where all the Composer installs go at the project root for PHP Composer, in the DOM PDF uh, uh, folder, there's a font cache. Um, and so there's some default fonts installed in here. And this is basically where that font file will get loaded, providing we can get the PDF reader to basically read it. So first, before we do the injection. So the magic here is basically getting the PDF to generate with the gotcha.css. And I've got that also in the in the, um, the Sneak Labs uh, PHP demo, is to basically get the, that file, get that font file to load as a custom font type. So the only other one component to this is, and this is where the original researchers got a bit creative because the font file on its own will not execute. What they actually did was you open the open the font file up, you grab the code out and you store it in a like a .php file, which you actually use as part of the font injection. So, and that's literally what I've done here is I've got a gotcha underscore font .php, which is on the sneak GitHub. And in the CSS file that we're about to load, I'm actually loading it directly from the GitHub because I was lazy and didn't want to try and work out what the local host was that you were running on <laughs> for the demo. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, the SRC is loading directly from the raw GitHub file, which is literally what we just stepped through. Anyway, let's ex should we execute it? Because yes. actually, let me grab it from, I've got this. I also made it a bit easier to launch this, but I've got the, the code to inject at the bottom in that vulnerability section. So all we have to do is load that in as a gotcha item, like so. Click the PDF. There's one small bug that I realized in my code the other day. So I have to generate this twice because what I actually did, yeah, see, it went tricky yet. What I actually did, and I'll set because we're going to see where the file created was I got the um, DOM PDF library to tell me the location for the actual file that it's just created. But it's kind of chicken and egg. It actually tries to do it before the file is actually created. So if I hit refresh now, it's actually going to there we go. find the file. Yeah, I've got to fix that. That's a to do item. Remind me later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you can see now, that PDF's just created again, but this time it's executed this little hack that I've, a little addition that I've added in. So it's using the library itself to get the font metrics. If you look for a font file, a font code loaded into the font cache called gotcha normal. And then if it finds it, then it basically builds a link for you and replaces whatever content it should have shown and gives you the link to where it actually is. So if I click that link now, that's a PHP info. Mm. <laughs> Ta-da! Mm -hmm. And now we've remote code executed. Lots of my local host information. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we have a look now back into that, that folder location, you can see, or I don't know if you can see it, but there's a file created there called gotcha underscore normal and then a hash string. So, and this is this is the tricky caveat part because you have to know that particular like um, hash string to be able to execute it remotely, which is why like, I did this little shortcut to basically figure it out. And normally you wouldn't have that available on on a um, you know in a remote code execution. You've literally just got to keep trying URLs until you maybe happen across it. Mm -hmm. So, 
entire thing. Um, but, oh, the other thing to note too is it actually adds the and where I was able to generate that particular link from. Let me open this. So this is inside the library. It's the font cache. It actually keeps a record. And you can see there, that's really where I was getting it from. Gotcha normal and then the font hash link. So, ta da, it worked. <laughs> yes. So, what would you say is the level of difficulty to for somebody to execute this attack then? Um, ah, oh, that's a real tricky one. I think it depends on their level, their level, but um, like it's not once you fundamentally understand like how this works, not overly that hard. Um, particularly when if you are familiar with some of the Steve, you're cutting in and out. Of course, bit, the, right? the way. It's not just me, right, Kyle? It's causing you. My back? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. I see you moving. <laughs> oh. Oh. Am I back now? Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, the level required to execute this with a sort of understanding of the platforms that it's used in, I'm going to say anywhere from a six to an eight. If I have to pick a number, let's go seven. It's a happy medium. Mm -hmm. Out of 10, right? Ten. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Kyle, you were going to say something looked like? I'm misreading cues like crazy now because of all this. You're on mute if you're trying to say something. There oh, whoops. Um, I just realized that. <laughs> so, yeah, new hardware. It's, it's going to get me. So, there was, um, man, there's another, there's a third vulnerability that was similar to this but basically there are a couple vulnerabilities that are recent you know that do evoke rce um or permit rce right and um they're because of yeah using you know custom custom fonts custom language right so um it is you know a a thing that extends access of the you know the internet and computers to more people and with that you know it actually you know that that increases you know the parameters of what's possible right um, in a multi, like in a plethora of ways, right? And definitely security too, right? Like there is another one that I can't remember that I wrote about, so I should remember. <laughs> um, oh, let me see. I'm gonna pull it up right now. Um, we we did this. Uh, we we did so much content on it. Let's see if I can remember it. Um, I did like oh, we did we did a couple of blogs. Oh, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. But um, basically, there was something in C, right? And in C, basically, there was a way to, oh, man, I wish I could remember. You could, like, read environment variables uh, from, I think I talked about it with you, Brian. I think we talked about it, but it'll, it'll on, come back On here, on the show? Yeah, I think we did. I think we did. Um, uh, that's okay. Right, I'm on you too, man. It, it'll, come, it'll come back to me. But basically, you know, similar thing, like, Custom, you know, you create a custom sort of like font thing, and uh, oh, geez, yeah, you basically just like insert a null, and then you basically, you know, get back environment variables, and uh, you're able to trick, um, you know, like some C. It's basically has to do with how C handles environment variables. I wish I could remember the name. There's a good name for it too, but yeah, I um, remember what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like little little bits and pieces are coming back to me, but I just can't remember the name for the life. Maybe there's like a little catchy name for it. But um, yeah, I think you know that, that's uh, definitely a commonality between these three vulnerabilities, actually. So if I could find the link for the third one, I'll share that link too. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a very interesting trend. It's not a trend that I've thought about until now. Maybe it's something we should look into a little more. Uh, but yeah, I think. Uh, the the language support bi-directional characters trojan source it's all it's all related guys unlike 
you know that meme of the guy and from it's always sunny and they're like all those strings like on the board and he's like pointing he's like it's all related it's all related guys it's all related so um that's that's kind of um, a little little fun aside about like how language support is a particularly pesky for programmers trying to secure code so um developer steve what can what can developers do about it developers who are using you know this library perhaps um, um you know minus good. minus his old co-workers right <laughs> <laughs> um, no, good question. Um, so there's some, yeah, there's no patch out for this as yet, which uh, is something I know I'm hopeful of. So there's a fix that's gone into the master branch, as you can see on the page, and we'll talk about earlier, but that hasn't been released as yet. The way, there's a few ways that I would, um, I would like fix this on server side. One is the fonts cache inside the DOM PDF, uh, like folder just make it read only. That way no fonts can store there. And if anyone tries to do this, they're just gonna get some weird errors anyway, or probably no errors at all, literally just a white page. So I would, I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Now, remember that when there's an update and this is where like, you know, keep your, you, know, you should be scanning your package manifest with sneak anyway, but um, we'll be able to alert you that there's an update and you can make that writable again so that you can get that update out. <laughs> Always remember that, please remember that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the thing that I would, well, the fix that I would put into place to get this sort of mitigated in the short term, just to make sure you're not vulnerable, not not yet, yeah, not making your, your stack vulnerable to a malicious actor trying to get that code in there and sort of get it executed. Because um, all sorts of nasty things can happen if uh, if they get in, as we know. Like we've seen it so many times. I've lived it multiple times in my developer origin story. <laughs> so speaking of the timeliness of all this stuff, what what was what's always interesting to me is um, when some you, you know, and we were talking about earlier when somebody discovers something, they should disclose it right away to the folks that are, uh, are responsible for that that code or that project or that whatever it may be. Um, what was the timeline like for this whole thing? Like how, how long is it? Has, I mean, obviously it's still not fully patched right now, so it's still out in the wild, but how long has this been sitting out there kind of thing since it's been known and that kind of thing? That's a good point because yeah, this one, um, so it only just recently got publicly disclosed only because the maintainers and it, nothing against the maintainers uh, on the original GitHub on the GitHub project. Cause I mean, these are volunteers. I mean, we, you know, We've all contributed. We always should contribute. I know you all do. You all should. You all will. Because uh, we're all products of open source. Everyone contribute back. But um, yeah, the original disclosure happened in October. Um, so mm -hmm. the security research um, group uh, sort of reached out to maintainers privately through their security policy and said, hey, we found this. We think we found this thing. Here's what we found. Here's how it works, like, et cetera. You need to patch it. That was in October last year. And so it just recently went public disclosure because they weren't responding. They weren't doing oh. anything about it. So it has been out there a while, evidently. So yes, make sure you scan those systems to find this sort of stuff. Be alerted about it. Yes, for sure. Um, is that, so Kyle, is there anything else that we wanted to cover regarding the this vulnerability for this episode of bones unleashed well um you know i think we have you know hit a lot of the main points i think we do have um a fix pr right developer steve do we want to look at the fix pr and like kind of go into like how how this happened you know from a maintainer's perspective for all of our maintainers out there <gasps> ad hoc things yeah i'm keen <laughs> i actually haven't looked at it yet so um yeah let's look let's see if we oh, can sorry, oh sorry i i thought I definitely didn't mean to drop that on you. Uh, I, I saw the link in the in the runner show, so I just kind of assumed uh, we, we would hit that. So that is my uh, apology. No, that's all right. Um, no, I've opened it, but I haven't looked at it yet. So let's take a look-see. Um, so let's see what it's doing here. They took out this, which is doing things with that local file save into path extension using the php info extension string to lower path info pass url yeah okay so this is literally that's just storing the file 
What do they do? Yeah, it seems like a TTF file. So, hmm. so is they're it limiting it to a certain file now? Perhaps, right? It, Maybe, perhaps they were accepting. Oh, wait, no, actually. I don't know, this I don't doesn't know. fix it. <laughs> yeah, this might be why it hasn't been released yet. This, this doesn't fix it. <laughs> I don't okay. think it does, but I don't I mean I'd have to try it, but switch. maybe it's a a piece of a bigger picture, perhaps. Yeah. That was the only commit for this commit. So um I would have to try it, but I don't know that that's actually going to fix it. It does look like so that wasn't there before. Let's switch. Okay. What this looks like they're doing is, so where in our version, oh, you all can't see that, but I'm just talking through it. Um, it's either going to save one of two files. So if I wasn't doing that CSS, uh, if we weren't doing that CSS thing with the PHP file, it actually only saves a UFM file, which is like a font file type. Mm -hmm. So the because it's a PHP file, though, it was actually saving a .php. What it looks like they're doing here is just creating a font file and a UFM file. So maybe that will stop the PHP from being created. To be honest, I like wish there was a way to, in this particular library, and maybe I'll do a commit for it. So the, the way I would long-term fix this is just remove the ability for anyone to be able to do a custom style sheet uh, PDF generation. Because like ultimately, if I'm doing e-commerce invoices in like invoice creation, why would I need it? Right. Like it doesn't need to be there. So it should let's stay the same just all the time, right? Remove it. Yeah, or at least give like an option for like this entire function to be removed because like I don't need it. <laughs> if it's like if it's a custom font style I need with the PDF generation, then I'm just gonna have the style sheet that well, the the font type that I need for that particular like invoice generation. I mean, that's how I'd handle it. I think I'm going to go do a commit for this and like put in the option option. You give it a <laughs> Literally shot. Literally going right? to call it option option. Yeah. Because like that kind of makes more sense in my mind and what I thought they might do. Not that, but anyway, yeah, that was just yeah, my thoughts. Like a font allow list too, right? Like if developers could like designate a font allow list, like that would probably also solve this too, right? Or just having like custom custom fonts maybe disabled by default, right? Like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Just thinking through, like knowing the use cases for this, yeah, there isn't like going to be many instances where I'm going to want the user to be able to style their own output. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just. Saying. And actually, I've looked through, I was wondering if this was the same, like this was also an issue in like NPM and some of the other ecosystems. There isn't many, like I actually couldn't really find any that would allow this particular function at all. Um, and even looking through some NPM ones just today, because uh, I mean, I was also wondering if this was an issue across other ecosystems as well, but right. turns out not. This is very unique. So, Well, it begs that question of you know just out of curiosity what the origin of that feature set to be added to right maybe it's one of those uh preemptive optimizations if you will of like adding features that weren't necessarily being requested or in demand but you could potentially see the possibility of people wanting to have custom styles to generate these pdfs you know whatever it is it's just very interesting to find out especially given the analysis that you've done developer steve for the other similar PDF libraries in other ecosystems that are out there don't offering that type of thing. So, yeah, I think it's interesting how, um, you know, you're able to get code execution in the copyright field too. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we check the copyright fields of all the other PDF generation <laughs> libraries, but yeah, I think, um, it's kind of, um, kind of interesting to see yeah there there's always something right so like there's um pwn kit which i just shared a little bit of information on that was the third vulnerability that uh yeah actually a character set right like custom character sets are how um you know they're able to circumvent the arguments list and uh basically um you're able to get arbitrary code uh, execution privilege escalation right um through pwn kit or pull kit so uh using pk exec so 
um, because of the way that C handles, you know, um, arguments and you're able to, yeah, basically do some pretty, pretty wild stuff with a custom char set. So, yeah, I think it's very interesting to see, yeah, how, how language, right. And like our, the way that, you know, users and, you know, ourselves, we interact with computers, right. Through, through character sets, through font sets, et cetera. Um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, interesting to see how, you know, it's all uh, a lot more related to security than, you know, some people might think. Right. So, yeah. So I want, I'll take this moment here, uh, as we're starting to wrap things up, folks, if you have questions in the chat that maybe came up, came to mind while we're going through all this, that we didn't answer through the just natural discussion progression, we went through reviewing this particular vulnerability, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And while we're waiting for folks to potentially do that, let's do like, I want to make sure I summarize and understand that for me, it helps me grok things if I kind of reiterate what you all shared with me. So we learned what we learned about DOM PDF, that it's a, a library in PHP that helps you generate PDF files, right? Which is a common use case in a lot of scenarios. One of them being like e-commerce doing printouts and receipts and whatnot, right? Um, that there's a vulnerability in that library that allows you to do what's called, what's, which is an RCE, remote code execution. Mm -hmm. Um, that'll let an attacker be able to uh, exfiltrate sensitive information potentially out of these underlying systems that are hosting your, as the example before we talked about the e-commerce site, let's say, right? Handling, you know, financial transactions and whatnot. Uh, then we looked at the demo to see exactly how it works. Developer Steve shared that great resource and repo he put together that allows us all to recreate and try this out ourselves. And what else? We talked about the timeline of like when this was disclosed. It was October of last year, I believe, right? And then yes. uh, the, the folks that were disclosing it were not really uh, getting any response from it. And so they publicly disclosed it fairly about a month ago or so. And so it's kind of out in the wild there. Uh, there currently isn't a released patch version of DOM PDF for folks to use, but there are things you can do today to help prevent you from being susceptible to this vulnerability. And that is one, the, su the suggestion by developer Steve, which is to make your fonts read only. Don't allow people to be able to uh, enter in or, or indicate and define custom fonts that they would like to use for these PDF styling. Uh, and potentially two is pull in, because they do have a, a fix in the repo that I think developer Steve wants to investigate further, but this fix is in the repo, just not released yet, right? So yeah. That's good. Did I cover everything? I feel like I'm, you know, I'm doing my best here as a, as a newbie to this thing. Awesome, uh, Brian. Awesome as always. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, for, yeah, for hosting this, Brian, and uh, you know, just being being part of the show again. You know, I think uh, it would be a lot different, you know, without uh, you here. So thank you, and thanks, developer Steve, for coming on. So um, there's one more thing though that I'd like to pose, just like a oh. little surprise, maybe to like our viewers here, all all the hackers here. So I would love to see you do a uh, reverse shell through this. If you could do a reverse shell through the copyright field of a PDF generator in PDF and in uh, PHP, um, you know, that, that would just be awesome. And you'd probably get your own like RCE. So like definitely try to do it if you know PHP and if you're interested. Uh, minus that's, that's a call out, you know, give it a try. But uh, yeah, see mm -hmm. if you can do it. Mess around with the goof app, right? Just clone it down and see if you can get a reverse shell on the box. And um, if you can do that, you're like super elite. Like that's awesome. And uh, you know, you'll be famous or whatever for a bunch of <laughs> for a bunch of nerds at least, right? You'll be famous. So I feel like yeah, should... a lot of people at home right now, Kyle, going, "Hmm, challenge yeah. accepted." You should do it. You should do it. I'll, uh, I'll I'll buy you I'll buy you something nice. I don't know. I'm like <laughs> just just uh oh. You we'll, heard we'll you give you a, we'll give you a little we'll give you a prize. We'll give you a little prize. 100. percent That's just like an open open challenge. Just hit me up on on the networks and uh, if you can do it, we'll get you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we'll get you. <laughs> we'll get you like Love a it. Starbucks gift card or something. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> that that was the cure. Wait, what? <laughs> There you go. There go. That, that sounds yeah. like I'm glad that that yeah. kind of worked. But um, that I mean that yeah, I'd love to see that as well. Just to see. Um, oh, I think we've got a couple of comments and questions in the uh, in the chat as well. But yeah, I would um, okay. love to see that. Okay. Well. 
Yeah, they want sneak hoodies. They want sneak hoodies. You're right, developer Steve. I didn't even see that. If if you can do it, yeah, totally. I think we could do that. I think that that's way more <laughs> value than the cost of a sneak hoodie. You deserve that sneak hoodie. And um, yeah, just like responsibly disclose it. But yeah, we'll we'll get you that. I think that's oh, better than a Starbucks sense. gift card. There you go. Well, look at that. Look at that. That's our model, Double our sneak model. Modeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So with that, we're going to uh, start wrapping things up and close it out for everybody. Uh, again, very special thank you to developer Steve for joining us and helping us out, uh, bringing his expertise thank to the you. table and helping us learn and educate ourselves a bit more. And thank you all for watching this, that tuned in live, that were chatting with us, asking questions and uh, engaging. And if you're watching this later, drop a comment below. Subscribe, like, you know, I don't know, smash the subscribe button or something. Hey, look at that. Look at developer oh, Steve's got all the, the cool. We got to see that again. We got to see yeah, that again. Run that, run that oh, back. Run the right, back. You know, yeah. I'd pick up to, um, there it is. <laughs> That's so great. There we go. There we I go. I made that. I literally made that because um, there wasn't one. So I if anyone wants it, it's on my YouTube. Feel free to grab it. We're going to. We're probably going to have you on again. You know, next time there's a prolific PHP vulnerability, we should definitely do this again because it was super fun. We're going to just make you get up early. You're going to be an early riser. <laughs> but um, I think I this think you need fine. a song. I, I think you need a song for the PHP elephant. You know, like bum bum bum. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Give us wait. some elephant music. You know. Well, I do have one, but I don't want to upset the. Uh, I don't know if it's going to trigger the copyright thing, but um, oh, anyway, all right, we'll work on yeah, that for yeah. next time. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. Save it. We'll, we'll find something that's uh, fair use. We'll find some like old, old John Sousa music or something. Philip well, and Kyle, you're saying we're going to have developer Steve back on for the next PHP vulnerability? That's going to be tomorrow, then, right? <laughs> well, ah. um, you know, oh. PHP is almost thirty, almost thirty years old. You know, so I think uh, it's yeah. like twenty-eight years old, right? So. You know, uh, yeah. as you get older, things start to fail, right? And in, in the body, right? So PHP, <laughs> PHP's been around for a while, man. Personal, like my personal body, homepage. as my body gets older, right? Exactly, exactly. It's it's an old body. So like personal homepage, man, right? Like it was made for personal homepages, just to like style up, you know, your website, and then people just kept adding right. things to it. And the creator was like, oh, I guess, like it's a general purpose programming language now, I guess, you know. But yeah, yeah. but that wasn't planned. That wasn't not planned. So. Kind of, kind of like the yeah. world, right? Chaos and uh, things stuck together, and humans, and you know, whatever. Like it's just actually, it's, I've um, yeah. been to like so many PHP conferences over the years, and run into Rasmus, the the creator of PHP, many, many times. Mm -hmm. And even he doesn't actually consider himself like a developer, which like he did. The, he's talked about it on like, conference yep. talks before. But he was like, literally, like I, I, I can just like tinker with code, and there's people that do far more with it than I do, but like yeah, originally it was just to like um, put um, put some scripts together for him to use, like to build out a website, and then next thing, seventy percent of the internet. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of pressure. Oh my gosh, yeah, I can't <laughs> imagine. Yeah, as soon as you know, people stopped using bulletin boards, right? Like the internet bulletin boards, right? Like the, they went to yeah, the personal home pages, right? They had and that's what everyone was yeah. using. So yeah, dancing gifts, GeoCities. Yeah. <laughs> timely it was very timely. all right here we go memory lane yeah <laughs> awesome well before we go actually one other thing i want to share and and promote for folks that are watching the stream or maybe you're watching the recording of this if you enjoyed it and you want to see more of this type of stuff we are streaming more and more on the sneak live twitch account and on the sneak youtube account so be sure to follow along there on the appropriate platforms and as a heads up, I think we have another stream coming up this week, don't we, developer Steve, with you and... Wait, we do? No, I'm joking. Yes, we do. Oh, you scared me there for a moment. <laughs> we... Come on now. <laughs> um, no, we have This Week in VonDB, which uh, we literally go through the vulnerabilities that are this week that we spot in the database. Because I was like, like having a look at that and seeing... Um, well, I don't really like seeing them in there, but I like understanding what is in there what is appearing and yeah, just what they do, how they're identified, pick through the code. But yeah, me and uh, Vendana uh, on, uh, I'm going to say Thursday, but I think it's Wednesday, depending where you are uh, in the yeah. world. But um, <laughs> definitely one to check out. We, um, yeah, we, it's, it's very random. We never know what we're going to find. Sometimes it's Vim, which like, I like Vim. So um, anyway, yeah, we never know what we're going to find in there, but it's always interesting to go through. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't know um, what VolmDB is, I just sent out a link to it. And 
that's basically where you're going to want to go. You can see all the vulnerabilities that, um, you know, we have covered in the past and all of the vulnerabilities that we will cover in the future. They will all be listed here. So, yeah, um, Steven Vandana do a great show. You should definitely uh, make sure to catch that. Drop a follow um, on YouTube or on Twitch to stay in the loop. Excellent. All right, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. You just watched another episode of Vones Unleashed. And we'll be back again in the near future to deep dive into yet another vulnerability. Maybe it'll be PHP again. Maybe it won't. To be very clear, I'm not picking on PHP. It could be any programming language, ecosystem, and all that fun stuff. Anyway. Honestly, I, I want it to be PHP just so we can get developer Steve back. Yeah, Developer yeah, Steve, great guest. Great guest. <laughs> I, I didn't have to talk for an hour straight, you know, so it was, it was great. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of the day wherever you are in the world or, you know, future of the world as we have some folks here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out. Play the funky music. Outro Play music. Play that funky music. Thank <laughs> you.